Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of All Talk Watches Twin Peaks. This week we are talking about episode 10 of season 3. I am Mr. X, and who else is here? Kevin. And Totoro. Hey, so this episode was not really all that confusing. No, I had some, you know, straightforward stuff, some boning. Yeah, some hilarious boning. Yeah. Well, I don't know, <laughs> awkward, I would say. But yeah, past two weeks have been pretty straightforward. They're actually giving us information now. It's pretty good. We know who characters are. We know how things are starting to fit together more and more. Hey, we're in the second half of the season. Yeah. Which feels really weird. How how many left? After this, eight. Oh, that's still a lot. I thought you were going to say like four, and I was going to say, Jesus, four? No, it's, it's 18 episodes, and this is... Episode 10. So actually, I guess it's seven, because I think that last one is a double. Oh, like the first four? Like those were two doubles? Yeah, I think I think that's the case. But we're halfway, over halfway through the season, and we still don't have Agent Cooper. Yeah, that part is actually getting a little annoying. It's definitely intentional. Like, he, David Lynch knows that people want Coop. Yeah. But still. Yeah. So I guess we should start with the recap. I guess the episode opened with uh, Richard arguing, right? With the lady in the trailer? Yeah, with Miriam. Yeah, she Is said that, that she someone? already... She, she witnessed him running over the kid. And then she told the oh, cops. That's who it was. That was the girl who saw... Okay, okay. And they said next time she came to the diner, they'd give her a free piece of pie. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I think it was pie. Could have been cake. Well, either way, she dead now. Uh, yeah, it seems that way. Oh no, she dead. Well, yeah. There's no question, she dead. There was well, she was still breathing. There was a lot was of she? blood. There was a there lot, was of, a lot blood. of blood. There was also and, uh, the I gas the... turned on and a yeah. lit candle. Yeah, yeah, she's she's dead. Most likely. You never know. But that also led us to, I know, somewhat jumping, but led us to discovering. That uh, scumbag uh, sheriff man is... Ch Chad. Chad. Yeah, Chad. Yeah, because she said that she sent a letter to the sheriff's office. So he to got on the to phone. To Sheriff Truman. Yeah, to Sheriff Truman. And he got on the phone and called someone and said he needs them to intercept the letter. And at the time, it's not clear who he was calling, but it was pretty obvious who he was calling. Yeah. It was quite obvious, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then was it... Uh, did we see Amanda uh, Seyfried again? Seyfried? Yeah, her and... Uh... That guy was going crazy because he was on drugs or something. Or coming off the drugs? I don't know. Both either. Same. Yes. Yeah, he seemed but, like a jerk. Yeah, he's kind of an abusive asshole. I gotta be honest, a lot of people in this show are kind of scummy. Much more so than in, you know, the first two seasons. Well, we got to hear... Harry Dean Stanton sing a song and play guitar. That is true. That, that was, was actually pretty nice. I did enjoy yeah, that. Yeah, that was that was a, that was decidedly unscummy. That was definitely a jump over James playing the guitar and singing a song from season two. God, oh man, I don't quite remember that. Well, guys, let's you're be, blocking let's, that out of your memory. Let's let's be Good. fair. James was always cool. He was. Don't cool. he? Oh God. But but that yeah, kinda, that yeah, that but that kind of goes into the next scene, which has probably a, an early contender for one of my favorite scenes of the episode and maybe the season and the series. So was, was it the uh, the trying girl? to kill a fly? Yeah, that scene that, was so good. That part actually freaked me out a little bit because there was a fly flying around. And one time, I think it was like right after she threw the little towel thing away, the yeah, fly like the came flying straight at me. I was like, oh, this is like 4D. But yeah, it was quite hilarious. Yeah, yes. she was struggling to hit the fly, and then she picked up the remote and was right in front of the guy, and you knew he was going to get smacked in the face. Yeah, yeah, at first I was thinking that maybe she was going to like smack him with like her hand or something. But then yeah. I, when she went for the, 
when she went for that remote, I was like, oh my God. And then when, like, for after she hits him with the remote, they, like, wouldn't show his face. So I thought that maybe, like, she had hit him, like, in the eye and his eye had popped out or something. Like, it was going to be, like, an any given Sunday type situation. Right. Yeah, but it was fine. It was just, like, a mark on his cheek. Well, he was bleeding. He got a cut. Uh, yeah, it was still, like, a, a little cut on his cheek, though. Nothing major. Yeah, and then she was freaking out, and then he's like, I'm fine, I'm fine, but she was, had lost her mind and was inconsolable. I don't know that her mind was all there to begin with, uh, especially given, like, between this, like, trying to whip a fly with a napkin, and then later on, she's kind of not there. She's the front runner for my favorite character in, introduced in the new season. Uh, What? Other than, Do, may I remind you of a certain child? Yeah, other than I was gonna say, other than uh, Michael, Sarah, Wally. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Sunny Jim. Sunny Jim is pretty cool too. Sunny no, Jim no, no, was no. always cool. Jim, cool. James. Ah. Uh, anyway, not as cool as Wally though. Wally is textbook cool. Yeah, you see that motorcycle. See that hat. He got a coat that with stash? his name on it. But uh, what? Then it jumps from that to uh, the hospital, right? Yeah, Dougie Jones finally went to the the doctor. Apparently, he's looking fine. He lost some weight, and, he, and his BP is well one ten over seventy. That's pretty good. Uh, really quick though, how does Naomi Watts not notice how much weight he would have lost? Well, well yeah, I should have noticed much earlier. Like I think that it's. Like here, so here's my headcanon for this. She is like so kind of disgusted and fed up with him. Like I, I have a feeling that they don't see each other like without their clothes on or anything like that very often. And like I know that she notices that he he lost weight from like when that first time that she tries to put him in one of Dougie's suits. Yeah, but then. I don't, so I don't, I don't, I, I feel like it, she is kind of disgusted by Dougie a little bit. Like, there's something about that, like the marriage is gone south type of a situation. Well, it had until then. Yeah. Um, do we want to jump over like the next thing where the Mitchums are back looking at the, watching the TV again and go straight to that next scene with Janie and Dougie? I feel like we. We should just go to the next scene with Dougie. Keep so it all tied together. Do you want me to read my my three lines of notes here for this scene? Go for Dougie. it. Because 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 I think I think I I think I nailed it, and I want to see if you guys agree with this. Okay, so Janie E wants Dougie's D. Dougie wants to finish his cake. They both apparently get what they want. Accurate. Well, Sums it actually, up pretty good. Wait, actually, no, you gotta, you gotta you read don't the see line. him finish the cake. Well, no, he's he's pretty well on his way to finishing the cake, and and they wake up Sunny Jim. Oh my, yeah, that part. So, so yeah, so she's like trying to be all seductive and. Dougie like, just but, wants that cake. Dougie just wants the cake. Dougie is that was a that must have been a damn fine piece of cake. Um. But then, it, so she's like trying to basically break a piece off. Are you attracted to me? No, I'm not, Kevin. Please stop asking me these questions. Uh, I will I never stop asking you that question. And so, like, so after they go through this little thing where she's asking him those types of questions and then he's just eating his cake, they, it cuts to them in bed. And she is just, she's on top and she is just riding him. And you just see, like, they shoot it from the back. So you just see her back. But you see his arms are, like, just out to the side. And he's just kind of, like, flopping and flailing up and down. It's like, man. (laughs) But then it cuts to his face and he just has, like, a huge smile. Yeah. And every time something like that happens, I'm like, oh, wait, he's back. Uh, but then he's never back. Come back! I don't think he's gonna come back. I think I think it'll be the if it if it happens this season, it'll be the very last thing. 
But yeah, it was God, the way she was yelling his name, and I was like, oh my, I could not imagine doing that. It was like a bad porn. It was, it, like it a was bad porn. Very, yes, very much. It was hilarious. Okay, so what happened next after that? Uh, the mob guys see the newest thing about Ike the Spike and Dougie Jones is a Mr. Jones. Turns out Mr. Jones is a Mr. Jones. Can can I also just say, I don't know why, but I feel like Jim Belushi could play a very good, if there was like a political drama that comes out about stuff right now, he could nail Alex Jones. Yeah, I could That's see that. all. That's all. I had that thought while watching him, and I was thinking, he he could be Alex Jones. But anyways, yeah, sorry, back to the show. But yeah, the mob guys discover, and they are mob guys, right? Basically, yeah. Well, they're they're definitely kind of skeevy. They're, they're definitely kind of skeevy businessmen who run the Silver Mustang. It's a Silver Mustang, right? I believe so. That, that they, run that uh, casino. Oh, oh. I don't know. But they definitely do some things in kind of an underhanded way. Like, they're definitely not on the up and up, which we can kind of get to a little bit later. Yeah, then we uh, see Dr. Jacoby's internet video. Again. Well, this was a new one. Well, yeah. No, it's just more of him. And uh, what's her name? Being actually Alex Jones. Yeah. Uh, Selling golden shovels. Which and she, uh, it turns out she started her own business. Yeah, with uh, the absolute best name ever. What was the name? I forgot. I meant to try and remember, but it slips my mind. It was Run Silent, Run Drapes. Like it's so it's That's a playoff of Run Silent, Run Deep. Yep. I just I saw that because it just it worked out so perfectly with um, the way things kind of were in that second season. Because I remembered, like, after the fact, like, once I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, the silent drape runners. Then cut to Jerry in the woods. The best. The best. There is... Ah, so good. There is there is just something going on there. And I don't know if it's just that he's lust, love, lost in the woods. And he, he just, like, in this, it's like just him. He, like, doesn't have signal on his cell phone which we're not really surprised by at this point. But then he yells out, you can't fool me. I've been here before. It's like, I, I don't know what he is on, that he has been high for this amount of time. You know, I kind of hope that after this show is done, that those scenes with Jerry continue as like web videos. And there's just like a new one a week for the next like 10 years of just him and like a two minute video of him being lost in the woods. Cause it's so great. He's going to be stuck in those woods forever. I feel like the sheriff and them are going to run across him. Oh, like when they eventually go out to the woods yeah. on 10-1, 10-2. Yep. Yeah. I could see that. Or what if he's already there and he's just like, just randomly there? Maybe. Stranger things have happened. But yeah, so then after that, um, it cuts to the sheriff's department where... Chad is kind of talking to Lucy a little bit at the front desk. And then he's like talking about, hey, it's a really nice day. I imagine you and Andy are the type of people who really enjoy the nice day. And you talk about how nice of a day it is. And it's like, I'm going to go out and talk to the mailman because it's such a nice day and enjoy this day. I liked her response. though, was, well, we don't always say that because sometimes we don't know what time it is. Yeah, and then like cited some really oddly specific example of the clock not working or whatever. Yeah. It's like, okay, man. So he goes out, gets the mail, and like I feel like that mail carrier knew something was up. Yeah, because he's like, they all knew something was up because, like she said, well, he brings it inside and then. He's like standing there, just going through all of it, and he's like, "What? What are you doing, basically? Like nobody does this. That's not a normal thing." Yeah, but he finds the letter he's looking for, and he just kind of like stuffs it in his inside his shirt, and goes on about his business. But like he he did it in such a way, like his back was turned to Lucy, so Lucy couldn't see it. But like the way that the way that letter carrier was 
eyeballing him. It wouldn't surprise me if that letter carrier saw him do that, like in a side mirror or something. Yeah. Like, I kind of hope so. Yeah, I hope that he gets busted. That'd be good. Don't know if he will. This is David Lynch. Well, because then it cuts to uh, the horns. That bear creeped me out. What bear? Well, it was a little bear body with, like, a dome head that just kept saying, like, hello, Johnny, how are you today, or whatever. Yeah. Yep, that at first did, but then I thought, no, this seems pretty tame. Yeah, this is normal. This is Twin Peaks. This is this is nothing. So it turns out that the scumbag kid, though, is a horn. See, someone had posted on Reddit like a while ago and compared a picture of that kid versus Jerry, like back from the original run, and basically said that, you know, these two look a lot alike. So he's obviously Jerry's kid. Uh, but that's not the case here. It's his grandkid. No, it's it's one of Ben and Sylvia's. So it'd be he, so Jerry would be his great uncle. Oh, great. Oh yeah, never mind. So the question so it, it's is it Audrey's? Is he Audrey's? Or is he Johnny's? I, think I wouldn't like think it'd be, be Johnny's, Audrey's. but so he'd have to be so he'd have to be Audrey's. So Audrey's. So Audrey is, we know that Audrey survived the explosion and she obviously yeah. survived long enough to, you know, assume, assumably have this child. I read a theory that maybe evil Doppelcooper did something to her when she was yeah. in a coma. I was just thinking that. Oh my God. Evil and then this is, kid. Oh man. Cause he's a pretty evil fucking kid. Oh yeah. Yeah, so he breaks in and basically wants money from Sylvia so that he can leave town. And he's just he's just yeah, generally a nice not a nice person. Yeah, she says no and then he starts choking her. Why did she even let him in? Like she could have closed and locked the door. Why don't she call the cops? And then call the cops. I don't know. That part confused me. Because Twin Peaks. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Yeah, and then he took, like, everything. Took money, jewelry, silverware. So I guess the next scene was of uh, Duncan Todd in the office. And he was having a little meeting with Tom Sizemore's character. Basically saying that he needed to go talk to the two uh, casino owners, the two brothers and say that Dougie Jones is the reason why they're not getting their insurance money from a hotel that burned down, and say that they have a mortal enemy in Dougie Jones. Yeah, so that way that they could get... They could get them to kill Dougie Jones for them, essentially, so that they wouldn't have to do it themselves. Yeah, and then they said if they don't get the job done, then Todd and Sizemore would have to kill him himself. Which I don't think Tom Sizemore could do. Like, yeah. not, not not this Tom Sizemore character. I like the Spike couldn't do it. No. But that was kind of... Uh, that was kind of... It, it was nice to see, like, those pieces start to line up a little bit. Yeah. Because I feel like that was something that wasn't... Like, you could tell that there was something going on there a little bit. Uh, but it wasn't... It wasn't... And you could kind of infer some things. But it wasn't um, super, super duper apparent. Like they didn't, they didn't. You know, I don't think they exactly spelled it out. Because you know, I think that guy, the Duncan Ton character, would just kind of have. You'd only hear like one side of the of the conversation for the most part, right? But it sounds like what they, the one that they, are one that he, the person he's really working for is Doppel Cooper, though. And yeah, that's, well, we knew. We knew that he wanted to kill Dougie Jones because he sent Ike the Spike after him. Right. But that's all we knew. And that could have been part of the uh, the people that wanted the money back. Yeah. Because was... they, the first time we see Dougie Jones, he, people want to kill him. Yeah, so I'm thinking that maybe they tried to hire it out to, like some, to some low-level thugs. And then when that didn't work, they that's when they brought in Ike the Spike. 
And then I spiked it and get it done. Nope. Last part of his hand. So uh, what was the next thing that happened? Uh, the next thing is you kind of see a dinner going on where Gordon and, oh, is it Tammy? Uh, are Tammy, yeah. Kind of looking at, or they're kind of spying on Albert with uh, the medical examiner. And they're having a good old time. But then that, that was kind of just like a really short interlude. And then they go back to the deal with the Mitchums. Yeah, Tom Sidemore shows up. And then here's... Yeah, and then this is kind of the other part where it's like, I don't think this candy girl has... Or woman has it all together because they have to tell her like several times to exactly what they want, him, want her to do. Which is to go out on the floor, bring him back. And then radio the guy out on the floor to have her go back. Yeah, it took a while just to get her attention to tell her to go do that. And then she goes, so just bring him back here? And then she goes out there and is, just starts having a conversation with him. It was great. That, that candy character is great. But then they get back. They have to radio in to bring him back. And then they say, uh, what were you two talking about? And Tom Sizemore says, nothing. She was talking to me. And it was about how hot it is out, and it's a good thing they have air conditioning. Yeah, and once they once they tell her that, they kind of look at Tom Sizemore as if to say, "Is that what she was really talking about?" And he kind of looks at him, at him and says, "Yeah, yeah, that's that's all it was." It was like that. That was such a weird little thing that. And there was a little line between the two brothers: "Says if we fire her, she's got no place else to go." So it's almost like they're doing it as a favor. Yeah. So yeah, then he delivers the news. Tom Sizemore delivers the news that they have an enemy in Dougie Jones. And then they decide that they're going to go ahead and set up a meeting with with Dougie Jones. To uh, I don't know. Did, did I? I just watched it. I, I before I've watched these about twice, um, and I only watched this one once. But did it seem like they were going to try and go ahead and kill Dougie at that meeting or? Was it just like, hey, we're just we'll set up a meeting and see where it goes? I don't think it was clear. Yeah, I don't know. It could go either way. It could be they try to bribe him or something. Yeah, bribing him maybe may cost less than than killing I don't, him. I feel like it probably wouldn't be killing only because if that were the case, they wouldn't be the ones doing it. Like they would have somebody else do it. Right. I guess they had a hit out on like the spike though. Oh yeah, they and they canceled that because yeah, it saved a few bucks. Okay, so then after that, it goes back to Gordon in the hotel room, and he's drawing a picture. Oh, I'm not like, sure what the pitch, picture was. It was like, almost looked like a log or something. It looked kind of like a carrot with antlers to me. And there's also a, a hand reaching out. But then there's a knock at the door, and he goes and he opens the door, and then it gets, cuts to Laura Palmer from season one. I want to say. Could be season two. Could be Fire Walk with Me. I'm not sure to be honest. Yeah, I don't know what that was. It was it was Laura Palmer though. Well, no, I know it was Laura Palmer, but so he sees Laura Palmer, and then it cuts to and then that fades away, and it's Tammy. No, Albert. Albert. That's what I meant to say. Tammy comes in later. Yeah, Albert comes in with the uh, proof that uh, uh, Denise, right? Diane. Diane. Man. Uh, it's so hard keeping everyone's names and all these TV shows straight. Uh, Diane was like texting Coop, evil Coop. Yeah, so we find out that she had texted back saying they have Hastings. He is going to take them to the site. And that was after the the cryptic message of around the dinner table, the conversation is lively. So, But I don't think they know that it's Cooper that she's texting with. All they know is that it bounces off a server in Mexico. Right, yeah. I think they have suspicions, though, that it could be Coop. They seem they, like they it, kind of knew. Yeah. Because he mentions, like, I had a bad feeling when she hugged me, Albert. Pretty good impression. Now say that you're worried about Coop. Like, yeah, it's on the spot. <laughs> Too much pressure. So then they also found an image of Doppel Cooper. Oh yeah, on one of the memory cards from that they said I think they called it the penthouse murders. Yeah. 
So I guess he was a part in getting that all set set up. No, I think he was one of the, one of the things that they saw come through. Maybe. No, because he was talking with a uh, another man, like a guy oh. in a suit. Yeah, he was oh. standing at like the, a counter talking to someone. Yeah. So what he's so he set that up to capture real Cooper coming out so that he wouldn't be able to take his place. Pr- probably, yeah. Or maybe to like redirect him or something like that. Okay, that makes a lot more sense than what I was thinking because I was like, it's it's some image of him because all I could see, all I could make out was was Kyle McLaughlin in that picture. So and maybe that's where Cooper's memories are and personality. If they're in that, it's all in that cube. Who knows? Okay, so then Sylvia Horn is on the phone with Ben Horn asking for more money. Yeah, and it kind of comes out at this point that they're not married anymore right and so ben is kind of exasperated then he's asked ashley judd if she wants to have dinner right yeah which kind of makes uh because i was i was under the assumption until this point that they were still married so i was like i thought that that relationship scene between ben and beverly to be kind of weird if they were if he was still married but if they're not then it's Less weird, but she's married. Uh, I think that that other dude was her husband. So I think you're right. So that that still makes it weird, um, or at least not cool. And then we saw the log lady. Yeah, I tried to. Uh, I was trying to write down exactly everything she said, but there every, was a lot. But there was a lot there, and it was there. It was perfectly good log lady material. Laura is the one. Yeah, that was the kind of the big take out of that. And she's Whatever like this whole time she's and this whole time she's talking to to Hawk, Hawk. Uh, on the phone. Yeah, and Hawk was just pretty much just sitting there nodding. I mean, what more can you do? You don't want to interrupt a log lady. Exactly. That's bad luck. But then after that, it's the weekly performance at the at the roadhouse. They still get me where, because this one took a long time to get to the credits. Yeah. And I was like, it's going to, something, because I, you know, I didn't pay attention when it started. I was like, something else is going to happen. And then three minutes later, the credits roll. Um, So that singer's dress had kind of that uh, chevroni type pattern, similar to the floor on the, on the, in the Black Lodge. Oh, yeah. I could see that. But um, so this, but the singer was Rebecca Del Rio, and her guitarist was Moby. I did not notice that. I was like, wait a second, that's these are the things that I pick up and notice. I I, I don't pick up the the main the major stuff, like at what is happening in that picture with with Doppel Cooper from the the penthouse. But hey, that is definitely Moby. So yeah, things are it's it it's moving along, but it's it's moving along pretty well. But it's just kind of at the same time, it's I I feel like it's it's the time is growing short. Yeah, there's only eight episodes left. They can do it, but yeah, I just I don't want like the last couple to be like that's when everything is revealed. I feel like the past two they've been revealing stuff in a pretty good clip. Have they? I don't even know. As much Kinda. as they could. I mean, a lot for David Lynch. Yeah, I guess so. Um, really quickly, we had a comment on our last YouTube video episode. Um, our good friend Rosenfield10. Uh, I think there was some question that we had about how the woodsman can kind of be all over the place. So what he says is that the woodsmen were cursed to serve the Black Lodge. That's why they appear everywhere, which makes just as much sense as anything. Right. So I'm, I really kind of, see, that's the thing. It's like, I, while I appreciate some of this exposition, I feel like they've set up some things that I want answers to from that, from episode eight. Like, I feel like episode, episode eight is going to be one of those ones that unless they, revisit some of that stuff 
that is going to go down in history as like one of the most talked about and analyzed episodes of television in history. Yeah. For good reason. I mean, the only other one I think that comes close is the season two finale. Yeah, that's... Oof. Well, that's not even as bad now because the show actually came back. Yeah, but so there was a lot that happened in that finale. It was At the time, it was one of the weirdest episodes of anything that ever aired. Yep. And that has now been surpassed. Oh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see what... We'll continue to see what happens. Um, yeah. I, I need to look and make sure that we've got a new episode every week and through the end of this, because I think that the last episode, like near once we get near the end of these... Uh, I think there is going to be one around Labor Day, maybe. So, and I know that sometimes they don't do shows around major holidays, like uh, on the premium channels like HBO and Showtime. Yeah. Like, like they didn't for, they didn't around uh, the Fourth of July. They usually yeah, like, they took a week off. Yeah, so usually it's like around Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day. So, but I'll, I'm going to look that up soon. I'm actually looking at right now the final two, you know, you know, like the two parter, seventeen, eighteen, are the September third. They are, so that would be Labor Day weekend. Okay, so they're going for it. That'll be that'll be good. Yeah. What better way to have the unofficial end of summer than with Tim, than with Twin Peaks? I can only imagine what that final episode is going to be. I'm looking at the IMDb right now, just, you know, at the air dates, and for all the unaired episodes, it says part whatever, for the ones that haven't aired, know what this is about, question mark, and I feel like that should just be the the, the same line for even the episodes that have already aired. For all the episode recaps, yeah. know what this is about? <laughs> nope. Neither do we. Actually, are you David Lynch from, or Mark Frost? Please do help us know? out by fill us up. I, do they know? No, I, I feel like they definitely know. I mean, I don't feel like they do anything just to do just to do it. Like they may, like maybe little things, but I don't think I don't think that they don't that they just kind of do. Oh yeah, it's major definitely very points. well planned out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not weird for the sake of weird, right? Mm, at parts, not entirely. It is. Yeah. So maybe we should go ahead and wrap up. We're getting kind of late. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, if you like this, like, give it a thumbs up on the the YouTube, and on uh, iTunes, rate us, and also listen to the All Talk podcast where we talk about all the geek stuff, and the Geek Box and Comedy Button and the comic conspiracy and manga machinations, and check out Totoro's Twitch. What is that, Totoro? It's twitch.tv slash t o t o r o gb1 i was gonna say we we really don't have to pimp that but it doesn't really fit with twin peaks hey a murder on an island what's more twin peaks than that yeah so imagine if a hundred coopers dropped out of the back of an airplane a hundred ike the spikes drop out of the back of an airplane no what fifth or 99 ike the spikes and one cooper there you go uh thanks for listening and we'll see you next week Later.